Hey everyone, welcome to the channel and to my January wrap up. So I'm going to start off with a quick little bit of housekeeping, which uh, I don't normally, thankfully, have to do. Um, but uh, I do apologise if there is any background noise. I've got some construction going on in uh, one of the neighbour's houses. And uh, just after I've set up my camera and uh, settled myself down to film, there's been some banging on the wall just behind that bookcase there. So uh, hopefully it won't cause a problem, but uh, there's the warning just in case it's needed. Now, I'm going to start off as usual with the stats for the books that I read in January. A very quick uh, note regarding this as well, because it's the start of a new year. Obviously, it's just one month's worth of stats. So the year to date is obviously just the same as the January figure. I have also made some slight changes to the series stats because at the end of December, um, I did update this to start afresh from the new year. And I removed those titles that I had decided to uh, soft DNF or park the series. So instead of appearing in my ongoing series uh, list, they are now separate. And I've only kept this for series that I am actively ongoing with. Parked series are those ones that I do intend to continue with, but it's been a while since the last book was released and I've not got a, a real update as to when the next book is going to be. So rather than keep it on my ongoing series list indefinitely as an up-to-date series, I've moved it to a separate category just to kind of neaten things up for myself more than anything else. So with that said, let's get into the stats first of all. As usual, there will be a timestamp down below so you can skip this and move straight on to the books instead. So January was a pretty good month actually. I started off not thinking I was going to get through too many books, but I ended up completing six novels and one novella as well. Those seven titles in total gave me a page count of 2,816 to start 2024 with, with an average of 453 pages. Again, as usual, the average does not include the novellas. I only average out the full novels because novellas would be a little bit too anonymous. They would uh, skew the figures there. The average rating for the seven titles that I read in January is 3.86. So for the series, I've actually started four series already this year. Uh, I haven't finished any as of yet, of course. It's a bit too early for that. One of the series that I didn't include in that four that I've started uh, is one that I'm not going to be continuing with. So this is uh, a series where I read the first book and I've decided that that's enough for me. I'm not going to move on to book two in that series. It might move up to two. I am kind of undecided, but I'm giving one series the benefit of the doubt, which uh, as long as I remember, I will talk about when I talk about that particular book. The series I'm up to date with then at the moment, as I said, slight amendment from the end of 2023 figures. That's now standard at 17. I've got 28 series in total that are classed as ongoing. And the days since the last five star read is currently sitting at 42. So on to the books then, and I started off 2024 with Starlight Duel by E.O. Lyons. This one I have done a dedicated video review for, so rather than talk too much about it, I will link that in the cards in the top corner there. Uh, but this one was a delight. I really enjoyed my time reading this. It was very different, uh, both in terms of um, kind of the books that I normally tend to read. There was maybe a little bit more of a romance element in this one, um, but also just in terms of what I had in here and what I was expecting. I liked the kind of spriggans that you had in here, the uh, the impact that they had on the world for some really good, for want of a better term, magic that they introduce into this world. They have gifts of the old tree, as the series title goes, that are given to the hybrids, including our main character. And uh, they give some really interesting abilities that I thought made a real difference to the world building here. I thought some of it was really, really interesting. Foremost of those being the uh, facing, the ability to remove memories from humans. So that played a really important part in the story and I think it went really well for it. I gave this one four and a half stars, which was obviously a really strong start to my year. Then I listened to an audiobook of The Black Company by Glenn Cook. So this is the first of uh, many of the titles that I've got on my 
reading plan for 2024. This was from my older series list. So I wanted to uh, read the first book of some older series and see if I liked them, basically. Uh, this one was a little bit different. It's uh, not a unique storytelling style, but it's one that I don't generally tend to come across too much in the books that I read. Uh, it's told in the first person by the, uh, the chronicler, the analyst, uh, of the black company basically that's uh, not the person who analyzes but the person who chronicles uh, who compiles the annals of the black company um, and I guess that's why the series name is called the chronicles of the black company to avoid any potential confusion with the name there um, but it was a little bit strange because we kind of go in through these chronicles and it takes a little while before you realize or at least before I realized that uh, we're essentially reading, he's uh, reading as he's writing, I guess, the chronicles of the company in, in his current time, basically. So you do have kind of time jumps. You will see a key event and then you'll see another key event, but you miss out the uh, couple of weeks in between as they go in from A to B and things like that. So that's, um, it's kind of good in a way because you don't necessarily want all of the in-between, all of the travel and things like that, but I did feel like I was maybe missing out a little bit uh, for that. But we're dealing with a company of mercenaries here, basically, and they are uh, affiliated to one side of a war. And we're going through and seeing this whole campaign, basically. And there's some interesting elements in here with regards to the magic and some of the, uh, the factors at play within these wars. Um, I didn't really like all of the characters in this one and it made it not the most enjoyable read for me along with the storytelling uh, kind of technique. Um, there were some wizards who, although I quite liked the banter that the whole group had, I thought the wizards were a little bit weird and maybe that was deliberate. Um, they're kind of uh, really old, they've seen a lot and they've uh, maybe had their minds addled a little bit maybe, I don't know. Um, but it was just a little bit strange and you'd have things like when they're playing cards around the table they'll make bats fly out of each other's mouths and things like that and it was just a little bit kind of weird for me. Overall I think the story was pretty good. I didn't enjoy the storytelling quite as much and I decided not to continue with the series because Although it was good, I felt that I got enough, I got a, a taste of the series, and it wasn't enough to make me really want more. So I gave The Black Company by Glenn Cook three and a half stars. Next up was an audiobook I buddy read with my friend Nina. We're continuing our sci-fi uh, series read-through in 2024, and we're starting off with The Final Architecture by Adrian Tchaikovsky. So book one in that series is Shards of Earth which is great because I think it might have been the last two years that I put this on, or certainly it was on last year's reading plan anyway, and I moved it across to the 2024 plan because we scheduled it in for January. This one, I mean, I'm used to Adrian Tchaikovsky. I know kind of what to expect from him. There's even a little bit of the uh, typical Tchaikovsky creepy crawly in here, although it is mechanised rather than... Um, uh, kind of insectoid, although I guess there are maybe some uh, some alien species who uh, have kind of creepy crawly elements to them as well. But anyway, as far as the book itself goes and the audiobook, I had a pretty good time with this one. It was a good narration. I thought the character voices were really good. Some of the characters in here um, I felt really connected to, I felt a lot closer to because of the narration and the voice that those particular characters had, so that was a good job. I did feel this one was a little bit, um, maybe a little bit kind of here and there. It was uh, quite a lot to get into to start with. There were a lot of events and a lot of characters, and there's a lot of it where, although I was having a good time with it, I kind of felt like I didn't really know what was going on, and I was piecing it together as I got further into the book, so uh, that's, not necessarily a bad thing because of the way it was done and the enjoyment I was having despite that, but obviously it does impact things a little bit. There was a lot to the history of this one as well, and I felt that sometimes we would uh, be introduced to new things and then there'd be a little flashback and we'd go into the history of it a little bit to get to know um, kind of how this came about. So that's not my favourite type of storytelling, but overall it was a good start to a series. I'm hoping for a better book two and to really enjoy 
the trilogy as a whole. This is another one that I gave three and a half stars to because I did have a good time with it, but maybe not quite a great time. Then I had book three of the Fractured Orbit series by Herman Stoenagel. This one is Resurgent. So I said when I read book two that it was originally a much bigger book and it was split into the two. And I felt like book two Chimera was kind of missing something as a result of that. I did, as I'd, as I'd uh, hoped, not necessarily expected, but I did, as I'd hoped, um, have that in this book, basically. This one took me back to... Some of the things that I really enjoyed from Eclipse, which was book one in the series, um, I think it's because maybe we spent a little bit more time planet side, or well, it's the moon really, rather than a, a specific planet, but uh, in here we were more ship based. Uh, there were uh, a few different characters that were on different ships, and uh, I, I enjoyed that basically. That's what I look for more from a sci fi, I guess, rather than planet side stuff so yeah that definitely helped i liked the storyline that we had here there was a bit i suppose of a um kind of a mirroring of the story to eclipse where you've got uh, people essentially trying to uh, figure out what's going on and potentially escape a space station here it was a ship rather than a space station but as I say, it had those kind of similar vibes, and that was what I really enjoyed about Eclipse. So this was definitely a step up for me from book two. Book two was still a good book, but as I said, I felt it was just missing a little something, and that's what I got in here. So this one I ended up giving four stars to, and uh, I'm looking forward to the next one whenever it comes out. I did kind of finish my reading, uh, my planned reading, a little bit early so I slipped in another audiobook as well because it was quite short and this one happily was one that was in my reading plan for the year so that worked out quite well but I read In Solitude Shadow by David Green. This is one that I've had on my shelf for quite a long time now and uh, I've just never got round to it and I'm really glad that I did eventually do so uh, and indeed that it came out of my TBR jar uh, as one of my reading plan books for the year so uh, yeah I really had a good time with this one again it was a really good narration which obviously helps quite a bit but I really liked the story in here and the uh, the kind of the world building element that we had we've got a couple of wars that are going on on different fronts and we've got I guess kind of your typical um, some of your typical tropes where you've got a wall and uh, a fortress um, kind of up north basically and you've got uh, an incursion from beyond the wall and then down south the other side of the wall you've got people who don't believe the stories basically so uh, they're calling for help they're saying that there's an upcoming invasion and uh, the politicians there are no we're not going to send anyone to help you because we're fighting this other war and we don't believe you then you learn that it's not actually all about that there are more sinister elements at play and I really liked that. We've got elves in here and there's kind of a different take on them in a sense and the way that they're viewed uh, which I really quite liked how I thought that gives some interesting elements for the remainder of the series potentially. I liked the magic that we had and the way that was portrayed and that you've got these uh, kind of mind links that you have as well which uh, obviously aids communication and uh, works as a, a plot device in that sense but I thought it was well done here in uh, the way that it was approached so that was good and uh, overall I just really liked the characters that I had I really liked the storyline it was a good setting it was nice and fast flowing it's quite a short book the next one is about twice as long as this one actually and there's also from what I gather no audio book available which is a real shame because I did enjoy this audio book but uh, yeah overall a really enjoyable story not quite five stars but not far from it actually for me i gave this one four and a half then i moved on to a patron pick which uh, i was expecting to carry over to uh, february's reading but i managed to finish it off a day or two ago this one was the grace of kings by ken liu book one of the dandelion dynasty and this is a really difficult one for me actually i finished it a couple of days ago and i'm still uh, kind of formulating all of my thoughts on it i might do a dedicated video review of this one uh, coming up soon so i won't talk about it too much and uh, hopefully i'll do that video and, uh, and get my thoughts 
together on it in full but uh, yeah it was a really difficult one and it was a difficult one to score on my weighted ratings and it's going to be difficult whenever I'm talking about it uh, for a few reasons. So first of all, everyone seems to love this book. Uh, the reviews or the average rating on Goodreads is not that great. So there's kind of a disparity between everyone I see talking about it, other booktubers and so forth, and uh, what the, uh, the general public, I guess, uh, thinks of it, I don't know. From what I've seen, I'm kind of the outlier though, because I didn't enjoy it that much, and it was, very weird. I said in my Discord channel when I was talking about it that I was very frustrated with this book because I thought it had a good story and some good characters, although it is, um, it's not original, it's, it's basically a copy of Chinese history rather than kind of borrowing elements from or whatever. Um, but uh, yeah, it's, it's kind of a retelling, I guess, in a fantasy world with obviously some fancy elements added into it and different names and things like that. But I'm not a historian, that didn't matter to me. It made it a good story because it was really interesting, but it was too high level. We didn't get into the details of it nearly enough. It was almost like it was a summary of the events over a fair period of time. I'm not sure how many years it's set over, but several, uh, I think at least a couple of decades. Um, but it was like a summary of it rather than going into the whole thing in detail. And it just had a few individual scenes here and there that were focused in on. Some of those were strange because you would have, for instance, uh, something would happen and it would be talked about rather than you necessarily see it happen. And then there'd be a cut scene and it was basically two paragraphs saying these couple of people weren't happy with that. And then it would move on to the next summary. So. The choices in that sense were a little bit strange to me. The writing overall, the pacing, the characters, pretty much everything except for the world building, I think, suffered in my scoring because of the level of detail that you had, or more specifically, the level of detail that you didn't have. So it was really strange, frustrating, difficult to summarise, especially so close after finishing the book for me. Anyway, I gave this one three stars because of all that. I'm undecided, but at the moment I'm giving it the benefit of the doubt and I'm going to at some point look at book two, which I have heard is slightly different. It diverges a bit more from the history um, and it uh, diverges a bit more from the writing style in this book, so I've heard. So I'll give it a shot. I'm not sure when, but it's not going to be immediate. And then the last book that I read was uh, just a novella actually in preparation for one of the books that I'm reading in February. This was Last Stand of a Stone Fist by Michael R. Miller. This is kind of, uh, I'm not sure if it's numbered, but it's kind of book 1.5 in his Songs of Chaos. Um, I'm told that it's best to read before Unbound, book two in the series, which is why I've read it now, as well as the fact that I've got a copy of it and it's just come out, so it uh, it enriches, or hopefully it will enrich, my uh, understanding of characters and so forth for book two. But this one, uh, I won't talk about it too much because, um, first of all, I literally finished it this morning, so uh, again, it's one that I want my thoughts to settle on it a little bit more. Um, but it's, uh, it's an origin story, essentially. We're talking about one of the characters and a specific set of events in this character's lives, uh, but one of the characters who features within the main series, and I believe is going to be more of an integral character perhaps in book two, which is why the uh, the recommendation is to read it before going into Unbound. But uh, yeah, it's, uh, it was a good story. I liked it. I liked that view that you got. I liked the understanding that I now have of certain events that I won't talk about for spoiler purposes, but uh, they are um, hinted at, they are talked about in book one certainly that I recall, so um, it's good to get the kind of the meat on the bones of that conversation basically, um, but it was good, I enjoyed it, it was a four star read for me, and uh, what I liked about this one as well is, it's one of those novellas, a companion novella to the series that I think the author might have said it in his uh, kind of foreword before the novella itself, um, but he was kind of light on the world building here, 
and I appreciate that because I have read a few companion novellas previously where I feel that you really do need to read the books first even if a novella is a prequel because the world building that's included in the book isn't necessarily explained and you need that kind of grounding in it before reading the novella. Here I didn't suffer from that whatsoever. I Obviously I have read the first book in the series but I believe that if you haven't and you go straight into this one you won't sink you'll be able to swim absolutely fine so anyway as I say this was a four star read definitely enjoyed it and I'm now looking forward to moving on to reading Unbound so there we go that was my January reading a good month overall even though the average rating was maybe down even though there were a couple of books that were perhaps uh, not as good as I was expecting them to be um, but uh, that's that's how reading goes let me know in the comments down below how your month went. What was the best book you read in January? I'll hopefully see you in the next video sometime soon. Until then, of course, take care of yourselves. Read some good books. Bye for now.